Welcome back to The Charismatic Voice. I'm sure you're already wondering, why is Elizabeth donning such magnificent horns? And the answer is that I'm really excited about this band and the songs that we're going to be listening to today. This will be Blind Guardian singing the Bard's Song and Valhalla. So I play a tiefling bard. A tiefling is like half demon, half human. I play a tiefling bard in a D&D campaign that's associated with the charismatic voice. And we're going to be on Twitch on October 31st. So uh, I'm really excited to hear the bard's song, especially because it's going to feature Hansi Krush. He's the lead singer of Blind Guardian. I haven't heard the whole band, but I have heard Hansi in an Arion song. And he was really good. So I want to hear him a lot more. I'm going to take a moment and get my headphones situated around my horns, and then we'll get to it. This is adorable. I love, love, love it when artists engage with their audience, especially when they switch so that the audience sings too. And there's just such an amazing feeling, I think, when you're in an audience, everybody sings together. And also the audience knows and loves this song. You can just see the smiles on their faces. They're so excited to sing with him. So yes, I'm here to hear Hansi's voice, but I have even more respect for him seeing the way that he is engaging with his audience. That's so important as an artist. Um, his voice is, it has this beautiful, um, like tenorish timbre to it. And he has this really nice buzz that's always present. And it also has like a certain loft. So he's able to go up and it never sounds like there's a ton of pressure on it. And it just sounds always like really well aligned in his voice. So I'm, I really, I think he's got some great vocal technique. Definitely looking forward to hearing him more. So I, we just had like a lovely uh, time signature change there. That was kind of cool. Um, I think we were in some sort of 6-8 before, and then it sounds like we just went to 4-4. Four, four. I'll go back and check that too. Um, this, uh, I also love that they have, um, they have two guitars playing because that is indicative uh, also of a bardic instrument, right? Guitars are similar to lutes, which bards play a lot. I actually play a kalimba in our campaign. And I've been writing songs for it and singing. It's really fun. Um, but yes, uh, guitars are very bardic, I feel like, as far as modern instruments go. Um, and let's go back and listen to this, this uh, time change again. So right there, I have a like a subdivision of one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. And so in musical theory, that means that that's probably gonna be an eight on the bottom. So it could be like a six eight or a four uh, or a, a 12 eight. Feels like six eight to me. Ooh, 
three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So four, four then. And then another switch there. That's hard to clap along to. <laughs> I did look at the lyrics before watching this of the Bard song, and uh, I can't understand them as well here, and I'm not super familiar with this, obviously. I've just looked at the lyrics once, and this is my first time seeing it. Um, but it sounds like, I think you're saying the Bard's song is over, so I like the way that that would be an indication in the piece. And also, if a Bard was like performing in a tavern, that would be your indication that it's about to finish. Um, and I think at one point there's even Let's All Sing This Song Together, which makes sense that that's how he would make it a cue to the audience to uh, come in with him as well. So that's really awesome. Um, let's see, gonna go back just a little bit. They're so happy to be singing with him. That's awesome. Hmm, time signatures are great in this. From. That was awesome. That was cool. I wonder if he does more of that when he's singing this by himself on the solo. Uh, that, wow. Very shocking moment. Uh, I, I was like, oh, he kind of sounds like the bard from The Witcher. And, and then he did that. And I was like, oh, no, no, no. He's way better. <laughs> so let's go back one more time. That was awesome. Wow. Such a jump and growl. That was the first time I heard bass come in. I was trying to figure out where that came from. Um, so I'm going to check this again. Yeah, this is all two guitars still, but then it sounds like... <laughs> That's so ridiculous. Right there. Suddenly we have bass in here. Is this transitioning to the next song then, maybe? almost sounds like a stringed bass or even a really low cello or just like yeah it might be a clutch bass too I am, I'm surprised they ended it by going down into a minor key, which feels very unsettling, like maybe we're about to go off to battle. Uh, I'm probably going to jump ahead here to the next song because I think this was an, this one is done. So bear with me while we skip. Let's see. And then a power metal? I mean, I, I know that they're supposed to be a metal band, but keep in mind, I've only ever heard Hansi a little bit, and then this bard song, which is just like, 
uh, like it felt like slow and melting and very pretty and very melodic. And now all of a sudden it's just like, bam, tons of sound. A wall of sound just started. Whoa, that was a lot to take in at this moment. Uh, I'm gonna start this one more time. Okay, feel more ready. Hello, hello, video game rock star. Uh, I bet that guy is super great at Guitar Hero. Uh, the Hansi definitely is using some some false chords on top of this. I have this like much more growly sound all the time. Um, you can hear the way he's he has like a really nice clean pitch in the middle of it, but then you hear just like tons of growl around it. I like that, uh, and it's very indicative of correct technique there that he could sing this beautiful clean a bard song as well as do just this incredible metal scream on top of it. <laughs> Ooh, what a laugh! This feels pretty, uh, I like it. It feels very energetic, very, uh, has tons of power behind it. I guess that makes sense because it's power metal, right? Um, I love, uh, getting these different angles of the different performers too. One of the things I adore about metal is that it requires tons of skill from the instrumentalist too. And so it's really fun, especially to get to see that view of the drummer and how he's using all the different things there. I like hearing different ways he's, um, pulling out different beats to sort of, um, it makes me, uh, it, it makes, it builds up a lot of energy and it feels, uh, aggressive, but not just aggressive. It feels like really excited. I like that. Uh, I'm not a drummer, um, but I've been learning to appreciate that a lot more in metal. And I also really love the way that Hansi like will sometimes just go into a complete character voice and then come back. He's very expressive. Very, very expressive. Okay. Quick pause there. <laughs> Yeah, I'm in a video game right now. Mm-hmm. Nice. I think that was the chorus. Um, I feel like it had some stickiness to it, which is something that is really nice to find in some metal music too. Um, stickiness meaning like it's the kind of thing that people want to sing along to. Uh, the Bard song was very clearly sticky. This one, the chorus, uh, because it keeps saying Valhalla in the same uh, note pattern, it, it sticks in your ear. It becomes like a little earworm there. Uh, that's awesome. Also, I uh, Something about the way with people, the way it's built, it doesn't feel like it's a really long, beautiful lyric melody. Instead, it feels like it's a shout out, uh, which would make me feel like a brotherhood of Vikings on a ship uh, singing their song as they're going off to battle. Maybe my imagination is getting carried away, but maybe not.
I like even that they have the woes at the end. It's definitely the way that chorus is written. They were thinking of having people sing along to it. I think they've even got uh, other guys in the band singing to it as well. Uh, that makes me really wonder about Blind Guardian and like how they consider composing their songs. Are they always looking for ways to involve the audience? Um, it, I think that that's one of like the keys to being an amazing performer today is thinking about your audience first, not about the artist first, but about the audience and what you can do for them. And I am, I'm just loving their approach of this continual audience involvement. It wasn't just the Bard's song. It is also Valhalla. Good job, Blind Guardian. That's, it's so clear that he has great screaming technique because of the way he's just screaming, screaming, screaming. And then he's in these like actual kind of light, uh, I would say it's probably his head voice at that point. Um, and it's still buzzy, but it's a clean sound. It's a totally free of tension. It's sort of an amazing, this is like a great example of what a person's voice should sound like if they've been doing any sort of metal scream correctly and then clean and singing. One of the things that's really striking me about Hanzi is also the way a lot of times he's speaking, speak like growling a lot of these words um, and not really going for a clear melody, but then he drops into this incredibly melodious voice. He has these really two um, two sides to his voice that are very distinct. And I think it must be such a fun composition tool as well. Yeah, I think this band is doing some really, really interesting music overall. Whoa! That was a really high scream, dude! That was just, this is so surprising. He did this in the other song too, where he hops up really high suddenly and it's just like, whoa, that was a really quick shift. That's hard to do, but it doesn't seem like it's bothering him. Dang, I wish I could see the moment before to see if he made any physical adjustments to prepare for that high note. You don't get to see it. Bummer. Maybe I could see it in a different video. Like even there, he's pointing out at his audience. He's saying like, I love you guys, essentially. It's great. That recognition and involvement of the audience, again, is one of the most impressive things that I've seen about this band so far. section time. Z 
Sieht geil aus. Klingt geil. Ich finde, Magnus hat genug gearbeitet. Wir können jetzt Frederik ins Spiel bringen. Dafür solltet ihr ein wenig lauter sein. That's awesome. I was thinking to myself, is this the end of the song? Are they winding down? What's going on here? And I didn't want to like stop it before it was over in five seconds because you guys know that I've done that before. Sorry for all of those times. But I love uh, this continuation. Again, it's that stickiness. We could hear it in the very first chorus, like all the way back then. You knew that that was going to be a sticky melody. And they have capitalized off of this by slowing it down and actually letting the audience bring that melody back in this like interim for a bit. I, I also love the way that the band is, uh, and Hansi is like, yeah, come on, sing it. And, uh, and the drummer was also encouraging everybody to clap. They are just great on stage, great at the audience involvement over and over again. It's like more and more impressive as, as this is going on to see how much they love their audience. One more in German, I think. I like that they even worked in a drum solo along with the audience singing to feature their instrumentalist as well, instead of just always having your vocalist like up front and center. I love uh, what they've done here with that. And wow, I didn't even count. That was so many times that they kept singing. That was great. Um, I also love that Hansi was able to show them with the entrance of his voice that we're about to wrap up here. And it was fun to listen to him there as well with all of the instruments behind him. And again, hear that like beautiful, he has like such a clean and tender tone that can go amazingly wild then with his screams. But uh, I was really interested in hearing his like quick vibrato too. He's such a bard. He's a bard. Uh, let's listen to that very last part again, just to hear a little more Ponzi. Ah, uh, here? Take the so that's one more on them. I've ever seen a band that adored their audience this much. And in addition, they are dripping with talent. All of these guys are just amazing musicians. And I loved this contrast that I heard in Hansi's voice. It was so cool to get to hear both of those songs back to back too and have that sudden like, wait a second, oh, that's right, these guys are power metal <laughs> moment. That was fun. But I loved hearing this incredible clean side of Hansi's voice and then this uh, the screaming, the growling that he's able to bring to it as well. He has some of the biggest contrast in a voice that I've heard. It's so beautiful. It reminds me a little bit of Marco 
in Nightwish. Um, but uh, Hansi's voice has like a certain, um, almost like a youthfulness to it. He really does sound like a bard. Like, I think that we should probably play D&D together. That would be awesome. Uh, but anyhow, thank you all of you for this recommendation. This was such a fun recommendation. And thank you for bearing with me while I wear my horns in support of Dungeons and Dragons. I would love to hear more recommendations from you. Please keep those coming below. I'm here every Monday, Tuesday, and Friday at 8 a.m. Arizona time when videos premiere. So you should come and chat with me during that time live on YouTube. Also, I have a Patreon where I do live video chats with people as well. And we also, uh, they like to supply me with background information on artists and sometimes they'll help me with some of my choice things too. So if you'd like to be part of that, check out Patreon. And if you want to learn how to sing more, check out my online course on demystifying singing. I hope to see you somewhere soon. Thanks.